for Corey, but like I said, no pressure. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. We have a special guest today. This is a tie-in to our previous episode about Heaven's Gate. We are joined here with Sawyer and Kathy. Uh, Sawyer was a member of Heaven's Gate from 1976 through 1994. He and Kathy are here to tell us a little background and uh, to let us also know kind of where they are current day and how they are still spreading some of the messages of Heaven's Gate. So thank you guys both for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so Sawyer, I just wanted to see, could you describe some of the beliefs that um, helped you align with Heaven's Gate when you were first introduced and would you say that any of your views have, you know, differed since then? Has anything differed since then? Yeah, the way that you see things as opposed oh. to like when you first, you know, the way you viewed the world and things when you first joined. Yeah, so when I first joined, uh, Tiendo uh, provided a statement that they wrote. It's called Statement One. It's in the Heaven's Gate book. And it talked about how religions had all been seeking to understand uh, um, uh, the origin of life and the purpose of the planet and, 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 and that they had become distorted into thinking that some of them that, that if you adored some kind of savior, you know, whether it's Jesus or Moses or Krishna or Buddha, uh, that uh, you would, when you died, you would go to heaven now, and some kind of heaven. And now T and O were saying right from the beginning that uh, that's not so. That's not the way it works. Um, that in order to go to become a member of what is really an evolutionary kingdom level above human, that is physical, and they 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 travel in spacecrafts that are physical, and they operate in laboratories that are physical. Uh, in order to join them on a crew of members working on those laboratory in those laboratories, um, one had to uh, convert all their human behavior into next level behavior. In other words, they had to eliminate their human behavior, their mammalian behavior, their sexuality, their gender consciousness, their um, uh, uh, racial consciousness, all their biases and their anger levels and, and the sensuality in terms of being attached to their vehicle, their physical bodies, family unit, and all those things in order to purify themselves. In other words, make themselves like an open vessel that could then actually, actually, actually creates a new being within the physical body of the human body. It's a metamorphosis, that's what they talked about. That it's like the caterpillar going to the, becoming a butterfly. And so T and O were teaching the process of becoming, being a human and then moving into being acceptable to be a new member in a level above human, which would be a butterfly to where they would give you a physical body that was eternal. It was no longer cyclic like human vehicles are. So Sawyer, uh, like knowing all this and in the beginning um, when, you, when you were told this and this kind of spoke to you and this kind of this um, putting together of science and religion which can, can be really, you know, alluring. Believing this wholeheartedly as I'm sure you did did you still at that time in the beginning have any hesitancies to, to, to decide to leave like the comforts of, you know, human life or like family or, you know, having to give up those sexual desires? Was there anything about it to you that was like made you unsure in the beginning? No. No, you were all in. No, I just, it just all made sense, perfect sense to me. And uh, even though I didn't understand it. And, and I, I didn't even think about what I didn't understand. I didn't, you know, like analyze it or compare it. And, and uh, despite what people think, I had been living on my own for five years and, uh, you know, with no support. And I was exploring all kinds of spirituality. And I wasn't in need of 
belonging to something or, or uh, I wasn't depressed with my life at all. And so, uh, so no, I didn't. It yeah. was, there's a reason for that though. Well, what because, is that reason? Well, the reason that it made sense to me was because the next level above human actually picks and preparates Prepares? Prepares, not preparate. I like preparate, so. That's a whole new word. Yeah. It picks and prepares human vehicles to be the recipients of returning souls that had had a relationship with next level members in the past, 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, whatever it was. Uh, incarnate, that's where the idea of reincarnation comes from, even though it's not accurate the way it's taught in many of the religions. But according to Tiendo, uh, so, so in other words, there was a Tiendo's minds are very powerful, and so they were present in that meeting that I attended at Walport, Oregon, in, on September fourteenth, nineteen seventy-five, and their minds were actually like clearing the room of all the discarnates, you know, the, the all the thought forms. Or even the space aliens that might be interfering with um, vehicles, our human bodies that uh, have a soul standing right there next to us, uh, trying to get into that vehicle, trying to take over that vehicle voluntarily by the vehicle volunteering to take, to allow it to be taken control of. And I know that's, that's kind of hard to see, but that's why it was, it made sense to me because I had this history in my genes as well. It's, it's a genetic history and it's a, a history during when this vehicle was growing up, but the next level had a, a big hand in actually physically in depositing a seed in this vehicle that could grow to become a member of the next level. And that, that's what, I mean, you know, it's, that's the explanation because there is no explanation that really works besides right. that. <laughs> so, we refer to our bodies as vehicles, just so that, yeah. <laughs> that's like, what? <laughs> no, it, and that was something we, so it, you just, that ties into uh, our overview of uh, Heaven's Gate. We did explain that. And I love that you just brought up the meeting at Walpole, Oregon, which is like this historic meeting um, because that's the one that is always brought up as the yeah. one where it all began, correct? Well, not all of it, but yes, <laughs> in, in terms of the newspapers, the press, sure, that, that's where it really began. But, uh, but by the way, Kathy uh, experienced the same kind of recognition of the information in her own way, uh, which is really interesting when I when she told me that. So I, I was curious about that actually. I wanted to ask you, Kathy. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> I like the segue there. Uh, I want to ask you, like, how was this introduced to you and what has been your experience with it so far, as far as, you know, being with Sawyer and, you know, hearing his, his past history with it and how that kind of fits into how you, you view everything going forward. Sure. Um, so I, I guess since I, I'm 48 now. And since I've been in like 15, I started researching like anything dark, serial killers, mass murder, you know, all kinds of stuff, cults, whatever. But I never, um, I was alive when Heaven's Gate was active um, and I never came across them, even though I have lived in some of the same places that they lived. Um, it wasn't until I was 45 44, 44 or 45. Um, I had moved from Phoenix, Arizona to Cincinnati. Um, and I was watching a documentary. I think this is how it happened. I was watching something on TV about, uh, I believe it was Jonestown and Heaven's Gate because they were mass suicide events, right? Um, and the person that was doing the documentary mentioned that there was hours and hours of footage of Marshall Applewhite, who we refer to as Doe, talking to the students 
Um, and that's the beyond human series and that anybody could go and find that on YouTube. So, and he also said that from the point of their origin to the point of when they took their own lives was over the span of like 21 plus years. And I remember thinking, what the hell was he saying to those people for 21 years? Like, what were they doing? You know, like, and there's always been this kind of like fascination with me of like, could I have done that? You know, like, would that, would that have been something that I would have done? So I went to YouTube and I watched, watched the first beyond humans, beyond human session. And I believed everything he said. It was like the weirdest thing to me. Like, I was just like, am I going crazy? (laughs) Like, it just all made sense to me. I didn't really understand what he was saying, (laughs) but I connected with, you know, God is extraterrestrial. And what we have been told as far as the kingdom of heaven goes is, is not true. It's a physical place, you know, like there's not people floating around ether etherically with harps and, you know, it's just this happy streets of gold place. And you know, it's like, you have to work, there's work involved with this. Um, and that just struck me. And I just started watching all of them so much so that like, I had my mom watch one with me. Um, I was still like engaging in, uh, alcohol and marijuana. And, um, I would go to bars and get drunk and talk about the next level with people. Like I couldn't, like, I couldn't think about anything else. It was the only thing that made sense to me. Out of all the other things that I've tried in the past, like I tried to be a Christian, I tried really hard. I actually tried to be a Satanist, but since I didn't believe in the Christian God, I couldn't be a Satanist. I was like, damn. (laughs) (laughs) So like, uh, I, I don't know. And it was scary to me, to be honest with you, because I was like, you know, there's all these comments on YouTube of this guy is completely insane and it's brainwashing. And I was like, am I being brainwashed? Like, this is like... But the overriding thing was, I believe him and I recognize him as an older member. I recognize him as a being from a different existence, a whole different plane of existence that I can't comprehend. And so I started uh, researching more and I wanted to find out like, surely everybody didn't kill themselves, right? With the exit, like um, there's gotta be somebody left. And I found Sawyer's channel on YouTube. So I started watching him and I started participating in his live streams via the chat room and asking him questions. And I like found out through that, that he was playing audio tapes of the meetings that they had held while they were in the group. And that was just fascinating to hear like inside, it was like insider information. Um, these meetings are like really intimate. It's just Doe sitting there in front of the class and just talking. And then they're asking questions at the end and, and giving their thoughts. And I was just like blown away. Um, and then I found out about the issues with him and two other members and also with Carlotti. And I was like, that's not very next level of them. Like, why are they all fighting? What's going on with that? Um, and Mark King came into one of his live streams and I started engaging with him and talking to him and trying to get out, like what's going on? Like, let's work this out. And that prompted me. I feel like the next level had a hand in how everything has, has progressed from where it was when I was sitting in my house by myself, watching his live streams. Um, I just felt impressed that I needed to meet with him and I needed to get him and Mark and Sarah in the same room. And they needed to talk this stuff out. I thought, I felt like if I can just get them together and they can just like be like, oh, wow, kumbaya. But that's not what happened. I did get them together eventually. I met up with Sawyer. Our year anniversary is coming up, September 15th, actually. Um, I went to meet him on September 11th, actually, is when I ended up at his place. Um, And I told him, I said, I'm coming to meet you. Um, I'll stay in a campground, but I'm coming to meet you. You can, you know, come choose to, you know, talk to me or whatever. And he was just like, oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't excited about it. He didn't really want to meet anybody. (laughs) And I was, there was another guy that I referred to as a seeker who he wanted to meet him as well. And he'd been listening to the audios nonstop. 
And I knew him also. From yeah. The, from the Facebook page. And so I met up with this guy that I'd never met before and gathered him up into my car. And we stayed in a tent in the campground. And because I was trying to like recreate mm -hmm. the class. Yeah. Is what I wanted to do. And we went to Sawyer's house, his property in upstate New York. Um, and I had him start a fire. We sat around the campfire and we looked at the stars and we talked all night long. I had all these questions written down that I wanted to ask him. And we did that for two days and two nights. And then we had to take the other seeker back to Maine because he had to go back to his normal life. And um, Sawyer and I rode back to his place together. And then we talked through that first night. And I don't know, it was, I, it was like weird. Like we just connected big time and we started a physical relationship. We've been together for almost a year now and we haven't left each other's side. It's great being with him um, and hearing the knowledge that he has. And with the education that I've given myself as far as like I've read as much as I can on it I've listened we've listened to over probably at least 70 audios I wrote them all down and just feeling like this close to the class yeah 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 no that's beautiful and even that moment I can actually sort of picture that moment of the three of you like around a fire it's like a it was so cool thing. I do have a question though I mean maybe so you can answer this what, like there was, because you both mentioned it and even sort of um, for you, Kathy, from, from just recordings and videos, there's obviously something captivating about tea and dough. And can you explain like what they meant to you? And could you help people understand how they've created such devotion? I guess what, I guess what I'm saying is, is like, what was it like to be in their presence for one thing? Well, I, I was always, every time I was with them physically, I was in awe of them. And it's not because they, you know, they didn't wear any kind of clothing or jewelry or, or do anything in, a, in any kind of particular way that made them look holy or, or talk and you know, I don't know, it, it was, it was, they were very plain, you know, and they were unassuming and uh, they, didn't, they didn't claim to know everything about everything and they, uh, um, they didn't feel like, they didn't need me to believe in them, uh, they, they, uh, but they knew that in order for me to grow, I had to believe in them because they were the teachers and they knew who they were. They knew where they came from. They knew that their souls had picked their bodies in order to do this task, to finish what they started uh, 6,000 years ago and perhaps, and probably before that, because they're, they're ageless compared to us. And uh, so- Our souls are ageless. Right. Right. And theirs were too. They were literally beings from the next level that incarnated into human bodies to gather a crew. Well, I'm going to, I think our souls aren't, our souls are not ageless. Unless we're recycled, right? Yes. But if the next level chooses safe. to recycle the soul because it hasn't grown, then the soul dies. And I don't know what that looks like exactly, but uh, the individual was gone. But, uh, but their souls had graduated into membership in the next level. And so uh, um, they are virtually ageless. However, even in the next level, individuals have the choice to disconnect from their older member. Mm -hmm. And the whole structure of the next level is older members and younger members. Older members are like parents to new members. And as long as we look to those parents for our growth, for our tasks, for everything, uh, we stay connected because they're looking to their older members to stay connected. And, and it, it's a beautiful design because there's no potential for corruption in that because they're not doing anything 
for those that are beneath them in their growth. You know, they, they, not, they don't need anybody to worship them or, you know, or, or, or believe in them because all they care about is pleasing their older member. So their older member gives them the assignment of working with younger members. Well, T and Doe gave, they set up, we believe that Doe was Adam, that he started this human experiment. Well, and T we, said that. Right. And we believe that T is God, the father, um, whatever that being was, that was T. She was literally Doe's father throughout all any, in any incarnations that they had. We believe Doe was Jesus as well. Enoch, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. And that's all according to T. So, so Doe didn't testify to his own being some, you know, great spiritual person in the, in the history, you know. Uh, he was very reluctant to talk about that at all. Uh, uh, T was the one that said, no, this was your task. And I'm here to get you started with this task so you can finish it. Mm. Can I, just for clarification, when the, uh, the term recycled is used, how would you define that? Because um, I, I know that it's, Doe mentions it frequently in, in his videos, and you, you just mentioned it as well. What, what exactly does that term mean? Well, Doe used different terms for the same kind of thing. And one was that the, that the planet, the physical, physical planet would be refurbished. And like all the pollution and stuff would all be cleaned up and the civilization would basically be vanished. So it didn't exist anymore. And people wouldn't know that it ever existed. If they were, if they were, you know, if they survived it and or the next level took them, removed certain vehicles and put them someplace safe. And then they had a bunch of earthquakes and volcanoes and all kinds of things happening for a thousand years or whatever. I don't know what time span it would be, but, uh, and then though they were brought back, they would think that, you know, they would live, be living like natives and they wouldn't know anything that there was technology and, you know, sure. so, so that's one way of looking at it. But the other way of looking at it is that uh, this planet is filled with spirits and thought forms and the ones that dropped away from the previous membership, elementary membership in the next level that they had, which are the space aliens, which the, the records call them the fallen angels and- Demons. And demons mm. and, and, but the discarnates are dead humans. Yeah. And, and they're like programs that are, uh, they've got a plasma kind of consistency. Uh, in their, in their physical makeup, but they exist and they are like a program of everything that they were while they were living. And uh, so they are gonna be, that's gonna be cleaned up so that the ones that didn't amount to anything are just, they're, they're just gonna be, I don't know what recycled. they're recycled into, but some form of, you know, energy changes. Okay. That happened with that. Okay. Now another part of it is the spading under. Doe talks about it as a spading under, which has to do with pulling up the roots of all the space alien souls that that have become so corrupt that they no longer recognize the next level exists, and they're working against the, the real next level. And they think this it's just another space alien group that they're in competition with. They, they're going to be recycled to where they don't exist anymore, and there'll be a new crop of space aliens that take their place for the next civilization that starts with a garden. Now, you guys are thinking we sound completely crazy, aren't you? Not, not at it's all. A little bit, some of it is a little bit above me. I'm not going to lie. Do. <laughs> I can um, feel what you're thinking. I can hear. No, it's, it's some of it's just, uh, I'm not, a, I said this to Greg when we did our episode on Heaven's Gate. I said, I am totally captivated on the subject. I've watched so many videos, Kathy. I feel like I almost took your same path with reaching out to Sawyer as far as like how that even came about. I just started watching his yeah. I went, I progressed from watching videos of Doe to then, then watching Sawyer videos. So 
It, but it, for they, me, they, like, they, the sci-fi they, part doesn't like. I, I just can't wrap my head around some of that stuff. But the subject material is super fascinating to me and really captivating. Dave's been in at 150 percent. He's been in. I really he, have. Might be, he might. He might be leaving with you guys. I don't know. <laughs> I know next <laughs> next Zoom video. It's going to be the three of us talking to Greg. Yeah, talking to me. Yeah. That would so be I, awesome. I just, <laughs> I just have like a, a kind of a follow up question to that. What it's like to be in the presence um, for Sawyer? Um, what was it like for you when when T achieved the next level? Because I know that left, would that, did that leave you guys feeling like concerned or did you, were you expecting that? What was that like for you? Well, I'd like to start with, with just my own understanding of those terminology, that terminology. Okay. Uh, yeah, please. That, that T didn't uh, go, she went back to her next level station and okay. the next level vehicle, physical vehicle that she had before she came. Uh, she didn't achieve the next level. I mean, yes, she grew from the experience, okay? But uh, she was already a member of the next level. So okay. she didn't get anything, you know, she didn't make that big leap, like from uh, like animal to human or like human to next level member evolutionarily. Okay, so, uh, well, for me, it, it didn't really change much. Uh, I, I didn't... I don't know why. I think I, I think I was kind of asleep uh, in some ways. Uh, not as well, some of the students were very uh, significantly affected by T's exit, and uh, I think some of them cried, and and I didn't see it happening. Uh, and Doe was definitely very affected by it, um, but Doe uh, recovered from that very quickly and learned a lot and recognized that he needed that experience of, of T not being with him so that he could finish the task that he had without her physical presence, which is a very difficult thing to do because it, they don't get communication to where it's like a ticker tape, you know, uh, coming over the news, say, do this and do that and do that. Right. They don't get, anyway, so I know I know people have said in the Heaven's Gate podcast and other places, other media documentaries that, you know, T, that Doe uh, became more controlling. I know one individual said that about him. Or that the philosophy changed, which is not true. Right. Uh, um, but things did change. And Doe at first, which you can hear in audio tape that I think Kathy, uh, we listened to together, um, didn't want to change anything that T put into motion. And uh, after that happened. And, uh, and then he started to feel like when he was talking with T in his head about things, um, he felt like T said to him, uh, no, <laughs> we're moving on. We're moving ahead here. There's a lot of things to change and do. Um, but essentially, uh, um, there's nothing that he changed from T's understanding that he got from T. Uh, and they got together because they didn't receive individuals. They didn't receive information separately. Well, they, well, they did. They received information in three different ways. Uh, sometimes Do received something that T didn't receive. And he would bring it up to T and T would sometimes say, yes, that makes sense to me. Sometimes T received something that Doe didn't receive. And sometimes Doe had to make adjustments when T would tell him about it uh, because it was like something that he wasn't really that conscious of being, you know, uh, being the truth or whatever. I'm not sure exactly how to say that, but, uh, and sometimes they received the same information the same exact way. Uh, and they would receive it at different times of the day, you know, where they were doing things differently. And they would come together and say, did you, you know, I had some thoughts and uh, what do you think about that? So they became one another's check partner. Mm -hmm. And they worked equal on ba equal basis, but Doe knew and he learned from time with T that T was his older member, that T was his father, his heavenly father. Right. 
And so, uh, so things did change. Like for instance, one example that what changed was we really got into a diet for health, for longevity. And so that for as long as we needed to be in these vehicles on this earth, uh, we would be as healthy as we could be physically and mentally, mentally alert. And so uh, he started the program of investigating fasting and all kinds of natural healing. And uh, that became the book, The Transfiguration Diet. And he said that he didn't need to go through that. So T left before we went to that program. Mm -hmm. But he actually started us on a diet that was a liquid diet before that. So that example was given to him of something that he could pull on. He could say, okay, well, Maybe this isn't so far-fetched to do because T started this while, while she was with me. So she gave him the example of trying to pay attention to our health, our physical health. This kind of brings me to a question uh, a little bit more broad and about the class. So every, uh, every clip that we see and, you know, there's a lot of them, whether it's their interviews or talent shows or just like uh, homemade videos of everybody just kind of having a good time. We see these glimpses of people that looked very connected and just looked like a very tight knit group of friends, essentially. And it's funny that you mentioned that about the diet because then it's you know there's documents of uh you know almost like field trips and people going out like going out for like pizza so those must have been like cheat days essentially um mm -hmm. can you can you share what life was like with your classmates at during those times and what the dynamics were like was it always like how we see it or were there times where it was more like people getting irritated with each other or like you know how you would see with like siblings and, and things like that yeah, everything, everything, <laughs> everything yeah. that happens in the human kingdom yeah. had, had similar things that happened within the classroom and fun things and pleasures. And uh, in fact, th some of the pleasures actually seemed to increase after T left. And uh, we went to the movies like every other week, you know, the picture show, you know, out, and we got popcorn. So we brought our own popcorn and we snuck it in. Mm -hmm. you know so that it wouldn't be too expensive i think kathy likes that you just said picture show she yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what though and tindo called it. Yeah. i like that you snuck in the popcorn that sounds like my family i know i'm like yeah. that's what we did too <laughs> right, right right and uh and so we uh let's see like while t was in our vehicle we went to the picture show too we saw et and we were living outdoors in, in tents. And we drove to Loveland, Texas, I think, no, Loveland, Colorado, and uh, went to see uh, Close Encounters. And another time we went to see E.T. And, uh, and then uh, and that continued after T left, uh, but it seemed like it was even more frequent. And we had videos and we watched all kinds of, t while T was in her vehicle, we had all kinds of TV shows. We watched Murder, She Wrote. And, and Matlock, and you can go through a long list, A Team, and you know mm. some of the things that you know uh, MacGyver. They liked they liked mysteries, and they liked things where people were figuring things out. And, and we had games. We played Battleship and Stratego, and because they wanted to keep our minds active, because a lot of times we didn't have a lot to do, right. and sometimes we were cloistered basically for a lot of years. You know, so we weren't leaving the house. We weren't leaving the campground when we were living outdoors. And, uh, and so we had an allowance of, uh, no, we had a mandatory 20-something uh, pieces of hard candy we had to eat every day because they felt like our brains were going through so many changes, we needed a lot of sugar. And that didn't stay for a long time. A lot of things they put into motion only lasted for a, a short amount, you know, months. Or weeks or months and th and then sometimes things became optional sure. and uh to, to where you know it, if you didn't do it like i'm not talking about dietary things but that too sleep patterns we were experimenting with and um and we're criticized for that uh, because they people would you know take little things that were said about that and they say oh they were sleep deprived and all that because at one point we were sleeping two hours and then 
awake for two hours and sleeping two hours and awake for two hours. But that only lasted for a couple of days or a week or so before TN Dose said that our brains weren't functioning right. And right. so they changed it so that we had a minimum of uh, uh, seven hours rest. And then we had a minimum of six hours rest. Then we had a minimum of eight hours rest. And, and you know, we had optional six, seven, eight hours rest and nine hours rest. We had nap times. And so, you know, it, they went, there was always things changing. So there was boredom though. And, and then students were going through stuff. Right. So let me ask you this then, because it, it does sound like a sort of a cohesive family that you still have like fond, you know, memories of. It's it, what caused you to exit the group? What caused you to leave the group? And, and how do you feel about that all these years later? Well, it's a long story. It really is. But, but he'll condense it. But I'm going to condense it. <laughs> okay. Because right. it, it, it can, in, in that Sawyer story, you can read about it in detail. Okay. okay. I haven't been uh, silent about it, but uh, uh, I only recognized like 10 years after I left um, what led up to my exit. And uh, um, I, I thought I was doing a really good job in uh, conquering my vehicle's uh, sexuality, but I wasn't doing as good of a job as I thought I was. And so I was kind of falling behind in the disciplines. And it got to a point to where I was also, there were other things that were uh, very large in the reason why I left. Uh, I mean, T told me that I was a little too pleased with myself and that I was, I like to be seen as something special and that uh, I was sarcastic with people at my jobs that I had, humans in the world. Um, uh, we were humans taken out of the world. Okay, so, um, and so one of the things that I had, I, I, I kind of had a kind of a big ego. I didn't even know what I had. And I was in competition with Doe at one point. Well, I didn't even know I was. And, um, but, so I asked T one time for growth. I wanted to grow like Doe was growing. I wanted to have a task like Doe was doing. Like, uh, uh, and I didn't have any idea of what Doe was up against. And as soon as I asked that question, I mean, within, I don't know if it was hours or days, but it wasn't more than a day or two, I, I was giving into sensuality with myself. This is after T left her vehicle. Yeah, after T left her vehicle, I was talking to her in my head, which Doe gave us instruction that we could try to do, because that's not the way it was designed to work. Uh, T gave us instructions to that we didn't talk to anybody in our heads when they were physically with us, because they were with us. We would write a note to them if we wanted to talk to them. Okay, so. So I asked T, I, 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 I mean, the thirst of it was good, that I was wanting further growth. I would have wanted to do more. That was good. But when I, when I said that I wanted to do a task like Doe has, that was way over my head. And so what happened after that is that images that before I was able to block out, like we would go to the movies and we would see sometimes a topless woman mm -hmm. and, you know, and they would say to us, well, you have to be able to learn to see that and block it so that it doesn't you know, stimulate having desire for sexuality. Not even. And so those kind of images that I had seen over the years, like were like in my head as if I was like having that experience with that woman. And I couldn't, I, I just, uh, you know, to be frank, I had an orgasm without even touching myself and uh, from giving into the thoughts. And uh, so, and so I tried to hide that at first and then though knew that I was hiding something and I told him, I said, and then, and then I went through about a year to where uh, I wasn't getting control. And so uh, one point Doe was gonna 
uh, give me a task to do as an overseer, which I had tasks like that before. And uh, I said to him, uh, I can't do it. I'm a hypocrite and uh, I need to leave. And, well, no, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I need to leave. And he said, OK, uh, you want to become more objective and uh, pass the phone to one of the other students. And uh, I'll tell them not to try to talk you out of it. And, uh, and then the next day, he asked me where I wanted to go. And I told him I wanted to, well, I talked with him about it. And I don't even remember some of the conversation because I was so kind of like schizophrenic at that point. And uh, why I was going through this, why I couldn't gain control, because I thought I had great control for 18 years, uh, you know, but I guess I didn't. And so uh, that, and uh, so, you know, that's what prompted my exit. Sure. It almost feels like there was like a, a buildup to that moment um, and they were kind of alluding to it, basically saying like, uh, you're, you're maybe you're going too big or you're trying to be bigger than what your role in that group was supposed to be. And then it, it was almost like those were like early warning signs. But it, it's really interesting if you think about it current day, you know, and this kind of just flipping it around and looking at it from a different perspective. Is this the way it was supposed to be the whole time? Because here you are connecting with others, spreading the word the way that they had wanted to, right? Um, and it's interesting to think, like, how would that be handled if you weren't here to do that? Well, see, I, I know I've been asked that question before or made that, that proposition has come up before. And from my understanding, from what Tiendo taught, uh, I mean, which isn't a casual kind of understanding. I, I, they said a lot about uh, the students and that everybody was capable of graduating that was in their group. And I believe that 100% that I had the capacity and I failed those tests. But however, the next level doesn't treat failure. Failure is another test actually, conquering failure. And so by my getting back on the horse and uh, wanting to be back in their service, because it's all about service. Um, even control of our vehicles is about service because then we can become a member of the next level. But uh, um, so uh, the, the next level gives us all many chances to get back on the horse. And, uh, and even though, um, you know, I don't maintain all the behaviors of the classroom, that's, uh, not to say that I'm not doing the best I can. I can't assume that. That would be wrong for me to assume that. Um, but um, we can't judge ourselves either. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the bottom line is I don't know. Uh, well, to answer your question, instead of getting off into other areas of it, um, there would have been somebody else that would have been doing this task, like Carl Odie's doing the task, and sure. and uh, Juan Odie in Venezuela is doing the task, and uh, and you know, because like like going back to the records of what Jesus said, he said if there was nobody to work the fields, that the next level I mean, the kingdom of God would raise up from the dust of the earth uh, um, servants to the fields to the people that or growing in those fields, you know, the souls that needed nurturing. And I think that meant, you know, anybody. Uh, He's I mean, super humble about it. And he, well, cause I brought this up with him and we've actually kind of had words over it because I think that it was by design as well. Everybody makes their own choices, right? And I feel like without him and doing what he's been doing that most of us would not connect as much as we have with the information. He puts it in current day terms and he's a real physical presence that was in the group for 19 years. And he's retained a lot of that knowledge that he learned from them firsthand. And that's invaluable. 
I don't. Dis- I know but he's that, not too you know. big for his britches now. Yeah. No. Well, as we were reflecting earlier, it's like that's that that way that you connected with him. That's the way that people are reaching out and yeah. you know seeing like how can we connect to discuss this and things like that. So. That's what we did when we first met, like immediately I wanted to go on the road and meet with everybody that's been in his live streams and that he's been talking to for years and have been listening to him. And we met several people and meeting people in person and talking about the next level in T&O is a completely different experience than what we're doing right now. Or like him and Carlin arguing back and forth over the years when they met in person all of that just dissolved away and they were former classmates meeting up again. Right. I want to ask, I want to ask kind of, uh, might be a difficult question, but, um, can you describe the reaction that you had when you saw the new, the news that the group had left their, uh, their vehicles in 1997? When they left in 1997, I, uh, a friend of mine who knew about my past experience, um, uh, called me and said, uh, you see what's on the news? Uh, they said there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, boys that killed themselves. And uh, um, was that your group? And so I turned on CNN and, and I, I was a little surprised, but not a lot surprised because we had talked about exiting many times and uh, in different ways. And uh, in the specific way that they exited, I was, we had a conversations about that. And so uh, that part of it wasn't that surprising to me, um, but it did put me on the spot um, a lot. And I felt compelled to uh, tell what I knew to the media, even though I didn't feel like I wanted to be part of the group and I didn't want to exit. And uh, so I very sheepishly went to a payphone and uh, called the Times Magazine and Newsweek and I told them and I had interviews with them in uh, restaurants. And uh, and then I ended up uh, going, doing a lot of media in New York City over a a three day period of time up into uh, uh, Easter Sunday. How did you? feel about it how do i feel about it (laughs) you're a therapist after all (laughs) well i felt compelled to tell the truth about what i knew i didn't feel like i was sad i didn't feel like i was happy i i didn't uh i didn't have like an emotional I didn't know that I had an emotional connection with them. I have more of a I I learned later that I have more of an emotional connection with them now. Yeah. Than I I I had at that time. Like so, you're like through your. And there's an explanation for that. Like, excuse like, me, because because you mentioned early on, and that kind of stuck with me. Like you you said that you see them in your dreams. Is that so, like a visitation that you kind of it remains with you to this day, and that's how you stay in contact. Well, I don't stay in contact that way. That's not a form of contact. But uh, I mean, I don't know what the dreams are 100%. I mean, the next level does work with individuals in their dream time to help them with the next day's lessons. And that can be anybody in the world. And, uh, and uh, they come in his dreams frequently, because he recounts them to me. Yes. uh, But uh, after 2001, I, I felt like, you know, the 9-11 event, uh, I felt like that was apocalyptic in my mind and I hadn't been studying anything scriptural or anything. And uh, right after that happened, I, w- I wanted to learn everything I could about why that happened. And I wanted to write about T and O. And I had, T came to me in a dream and uh, approved of my writing. Uh, the, I was gonna write a book that was called The Message and I felt like she approved of it. Uh, that's the only thing. I, and uh, then, then I had, I had more, many dreams after that that were like uh, all different kinds of settings. And sometimes they were in response to questions I had. 
And, uh, but they were all like personal for me. They weren't telling me to go do something or, 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 or uh, but they did tell me that I had a task um, and that uh, I was being given a task to do. And, uh, and sometimes it was Doe by himself. Sometimes it was uh, Sorodi by himself. And he was showing me Doe working with a group of students. And I, was, and I remember thinking uh, in one dream, you know, how come Doe didn't look at me? And then another dream I had with Sorodi uh, showing me the class and Doe turned his face and looked at me. And I was like, whoa, you know, in the dream. And, and, and then I had, uh, um, I had other events that were happening. Uh, I had uh, spirit sightings and I had, uh, I, I, I would a I asked for a sign. I saw a streak in the sky, you know, right, right away. And uh, I saw streaks other times, you know, that seemed to be, I, I saw a streak in this one spot where I would go into the house after I came back from a music gig because I was playing music at the time on New in New York. And I, I looked up at the sky in this spot right before I opened the door and there was a streak. And then uh, the, weeks later, I, I kind of was in the habit of looking up into that spot. I looked up at that spot. I didn't see anything, but I had this thought of, I wonder if we're going to be bombed. And the next day, the next morning was the 9-11 event. And, you know, so a lot of things happen like that. And, uh, you know, I could spend hours just talking about all those experiences. Yeah. So, and so I, uh, but I, but I, I saw the dreams at one point, just to finish that, I got to the point to where in a waking moment, I, sa I said to Doe, I want, I, I would like to be of service again, but is there any, is there any possibility that I wouldn't have to leave my daughter behind because I had a daughter at the time she was about four years old five years old and uh and I couldn't imagine leaving her and you know to go do something for the class and the thought I got back right away which felt like I thought it was a response from them I can't tell for sure that it was was that's not necessary right now and uh so I started to you know I just started to do more and think more about how I could serve. So I just have to say one thing before, you know, we, we start to wrap things up, but I, I, I think that when Dave had mentioned early on that maybe these things happen for a reason and the whole, the reason why you exited being, being that what it was. Um, and now you, you have a daughter, so that there's nothing more meaningful than that. And maybe that does point to the, you know, a, a bigger plan and that that needed to happen so that you could have this, you know, important part of your life? Well, I, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't uh, I, the next level takes advantage of everything and they don't mm -hmm. throw anybody away that right. has value. They don't like waste. Right. They don't like waste. So any, any soul that's growing, they're going to try to help that soul grow. And so they get, they give, the way that we grow is by having tasks to the next level, by having service to the next level, by changing our behaviors in ways so that we can be a better service to the next level. Um, like Doe would say, if, if any of this, like when the Beyond Human series, he said, if any of this like resonates with you, like go into your quiet place, go, you know, away from people and, and cry out with all your being. Is this true? Yeah direct your thoughts past everything as Out far the into space as you can past all the influences on this planet and that surround this planet and ask is the next level true are you true doe and then is this real you know and then this... listen and then what you see over the next coming days weeks months may surprise you and, well yeah and, and you know uh, it might go back and forth for a long time you know doubts are normal there's nothing wrong with any any of that because it's all it's all meant to be 100 percent voluntary even no matter step what you, of the way yeah, no matter what you believe like ask is that true is this true like you know heaven's gate what if they were right <laughs> yeah that's, right. that's perfect. a line right there 
That is the line. And that is an amazing way for us to wrap up this interview. Um, <laughs> honestly, such a pleasure. Thank you both so much for taking the time to do this with us. And just Thanks for having us. Yeah, it means a lot to us. Yeah, it means a lot to us. Yeah, for the, for the opportunity. Us, yeah, yeah, we appreciate it so much. And, and maybe we'll be in touch again to have another chat because this was fun. Yes, awesome. definitely. Uh, okay, no question great, about great. it. Let's keep the keep the good relationship. I like it. I like it a lot. So um, thank you again for being with us. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you, and guys. Thank, thank you, everyone, for listening. And we hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. Everyone have a great night. See you next week.